Hello everybody, welcome back to another Engage update and indeed another video. I'm sorry about that it's been a while since I last update uploaded, sorry. Um I've just been sort of taking a break over the Christmas holiday, but we're back at it with more videos now, I think. So yeah, let's get into it. So as you can see, there's probably been a lot of difference from when you last saw this layout um a few videos ago. Um in that we've added a baseboard, we've stuck down the track, there's some new rolling stock. So I'm just going to walk you through all the stuff that we've done to it. So first of all, we bought some new rolling stock with my Christmas money. We bought a new wagon to go with my little goods train thing that's there. So yeah, that's that just sort of tops it off with two wagons rather than just one. So that's quite cool. And we've also got three Mark 1s. I have two exactly the same Taurus second opens. They're exactly the same running number, exactly the same model, just two different examples of that model. And we also have this, which is a buffet car. Now, I'm quite fond of this because they have some of these on a lot of preserved railways, just serving light snacks and refreshments. And I just think it looks really cool and it really fits in as part of like a sort of preserved railway style train. So I like that. And we've also built a Metcalf platform kit. Um, we've got a country station in the works, but it's not finished. So that country station building is going to go on top of this. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. We've also, as I said, stuck down the track. We did that with copy decks glue, um, just by, like, dabbing it around certain places on the, the bits of track like different bits of the mould and just sort of pasting it around the edges and just sort of snapping the track back together. It's slightly messy, but once all the details on the layout, you won't be able to tell it was even there. So, yeah, it's I think it's a decent way to do it. Um, we've made the wiring permanent. We've gaffer taped like loose wire to the to the bottom of the board and um we've sort of like Drilled through the different um, bits of the baseboard, I'll talk about what I mean in a minute, um, to sort of accommodate the wires, and we've made them permanent. Um, we've, like, I don't know if you can see, there's a little cable tie holding the wires together, but there's a little unpluggable wiring rig, so that if I ever want to take the controller off, then I can do that. Um, I'm going to need to take the controller off, actually, because... If if you can see where it's stored, we actually store it upright against my wall, which is not the most convenient way to store it, but um, it's the only one we have room for. And so let's get on to the elephant in the room, which is indeed the baseboard. So obviously it's here, <laughs> um, and we've built it. We've built it up so that it's stronger than just a board. So underneath, obviously, we've got all the wiring, so to create, like, a space for that so it won't catch on everything when the layout's being moved around, we've made, sort of, a frame underneath that sort of elevates it maybe three or four inches from the ground. Um, so it's got, like, beams running widthways, so wherever there's two screws, there's a beam running under it. So there's one there, there's one here, there's one there, and so-and-so. Um... No, so on, so um, so yeah, we've we've got a lot done, um, and as you might notice, I'm filming the lot that we've done in a whole different room. This is indeed my bedroom where I film all my double O videos because that's where this layout is. This is where this is kept. So, um, I just thought I'd show you some little clips of the trains running together, um. We've we've got on the N-gauge layout obviously the 94XX 9402 um as usual because I don't actually have another engine. Um some of you might know that I bought a Graham, Graham Farish Hall class but it kept derailing on the points so I sent it back without making a video about it. So yeah, we're now waiting for a call from my model shop to um confirm that there is some like there's been some someone come in with second-hand engage for me to come and buy again because the 
they gave us a refund for the hall class, so we're going to go and see what we can find in a few days' time, and I will update you on that if we buy another engine. So yeah, we've got the 94XX as usual with the three Mark 1s, and then on the double O layout I've matched the pannier on the N-gauge layout with a pannier on the double O layout. In this case it's a Hornby 27XX with um, three Hornby four-wheeled Mark 1s and what I believe to be a Triang Great Western brake van, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. You'll have to tell me what it is in the comments if you know, but either way, it's a Great Western towed brake van. So, yeah, let's get to seeing them running. Now, I have to apologise for the um, wobbly camera work. I am actually stuck in a corner of my bedroom because these two layouts take up so much room when they're out that there isn't actually room for me to just sort of walk around in it. I'm actually just sat here cross-legged. Um, and I'm having to just sort of reach around with one hand to film the double O layout. So, yeah, it's it's pretty hilarious, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of the N-Gage layout because I built it myself, um, more or less. Um, but I just want to... I know they won't be watching because they're such a big company, but Kato, thank you so much for building all this... designing all this track and stuff. Because I wouldn't have been able to do this had your system not been so easy to put together. Because I wouldn't know where to start with a soldering iron and stuff like that. I should explain that my granddad built all of this before me. Um, before I even got the chance to learn how to do it. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much Kato for designing this, massive, this massively helpful track method. Um, so, yeah... And obviously we've got the pannier coming by. So, it's going to be a massive project. This might take sort of two or three years. I don't even know if I'll still be running the channel by then, if I'll have just stopped YouTube. But, yeah, we'll have to see. But I'll probably document the end project at some point, hopefully. Um... Because, like, there will come a time when I'm just adding finishing touches. So, that'll be something to be excited for. Um, but, obviously, you can see we're still in the starting stages at the moment. There's a long way to go until then. So, yeah, I think I'm happy with it for now. But, obviously, there's still a lot to do. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really happy with it. Tiny little engine. It runs well. That cost us seventy pounds, I think. Actually, no, they put it down to sixty. Yeah, sixty pounds for an engine such as that, which runs really well, and it's that scale. I just, I'm absolutely amazed at how easy it was to start in Engage, thanks to the thanks to the con the absolute conveniences of a few companies. So thank you, Graham Farish, for well being such a long time ago that all your products have gone down in value, and thank you Kato for making your system so easy to put together. Neither of those companies will be watching, but thank you anyway. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of cool to see the two engines running together. Many a running session is to follow. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see um, a N-Gage running session once I get the other engine. Um, because, yeah, I think that would be cool, because obviously we've got the passing loop, so I could have one engine in one side and one engine in the other side and just sort of close the points when it's on the other side and just sort of let them run round alternately. So, yeah, just a little update for you, just to show you what we've been doing. So, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Nothing really I can talk about, so... See you later, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.